I found out my dad was not my dad when I was 13 years old. He was driving me to gymnastics, and out of the blue, he said, you know I'm not your real dad, right? And I was like, what? <laughs> Later, I couldn't sleep, and I woke my mom up in the middle of the night, and I asked her, I like shook her and said, mom, is dad my real dad? And she's like, what? And I said, he told me in the car that you guys used a sperm donor. And she just says, go to your room. And she came in, she sat on my bed and she said, what he told, what dad told you was correct. And I don't know why he told you and we planned to never tell you. And she said she didn't know anything about who it was, that everything was anonymous. And we kind of never talked about it again for 23 years. <laughs> It was something that for a long time I wish that I had never known. Because we weren't allowed to talk about it, I assumed it was shameful so that my very existence was like I shouldn't have been born. The doctors I was working with, the last thing they wanted was for you to find out to be interested in, in offspring and uh, make any kind of a uh, contact with the, with the recipients. They never showed photographs of the, uh, of the babies that were coming out. I never expected to meet any of them. That was definitely not supposed to happen. But we didn't count on uh, DNA for the masses, on internet where anybody on the planet can look up and contact just about anybody else on the planet. <laughs> Oh, I got oh the my God. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, greetings. You look so nice. How are you? I took the 23andMe um, test, and there was a thing that said DNA relatives. I logged in with my mom sitting right next to me, and we just looked at each other. My dad was watching TV, and we kind of like whispered, like, oh, shoot. <laughs> I just got a call one night from this woman uh, who asked if I'd been a donor in the East Bay in San Francisco in the 80s. and. I said, yes, and uh, she says, I believe you're my father. <laughs> and that was, that was daddy, and that was the start of this whole thing. When I got off the phone, I just felt like he's a real guy, and he was kind, and I had answers. And I found out he had been donating for 15 years, <laughs> and there were potentially 80-plus siblings, and that was a shock. <laughs> Danny messages me and says, hi, um, we're related, and I think we're brother and sister. What do you know about your father? And um, my parents had never told me about this. This was completely unexpected. So I was thinking, well, my, my dad, he's a sailor. I know he's had children from marriages previously to my mother's. Um, so I thought that maybe there was this other sibling that I didn't know about from, from that. And then she started going on about Bruce, and I'm like, there's no way. This is not happening. I was, I was in denial. After, after Danny found Bruce, more and more names started popping up on 23andMe. All of a sudden there were, you know, Chris, Lindsay, 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 you know, like there were two Lindsays and two Zachs and, you know, the, all, these, all these names. I was invited to the Facebook group, and, uh, you know, I went in there and I logged in and I'm like, this is unreal. There's something going on. These people are messing with me. This is a joke. I was like, this is absurd and I need to be a part of it. I was just the first one to hop up in the chair to get the tattoo. Um, but we had talked about it 
jokingly in our group text about what do we do when there's a big group reunion? Well, clearly we need to go get a tattoo, like, you know, the Fellowship of the Ring, those guys and, you know, that's where my brain goes because I'm a real geek. I myself already have plenty of tattoos and they all have their meanings, but this particular one is, it's my first matching tattoo. You know, I've never had a, a tattoo that I've shared with anyone before. And it makes me feel a little bit closer to this family of weirdness that I've come to love in its own way. Mark, you've done this before, haven't you? Once or twice. But I was young and needed the money. <laughs> Bruce knows all about that. <laughs> <laughs> there is a better way. <laughs> it's almost like making fun of the situation, but at the same time, it's bonding and it connects us and it's goofy and it's silly, and the fact that it's actually sperm tattooed on you is completely ridiculous. It's like, well, we're gonna just have to say, well, the scenario is weird, then we're weird, and we're just gonna all be weird together. <laughs> this is, uh, this is... This is how we got here. How we got here is what connects us all. <laughs> yes. I've gone on some other Facebook groups for not just us, but people in general that have found out that they are donor conceived or um, you know they, they found out through various DNA sites their parents aren't who they expected and um, I've heard some horror stories people whose donors don't want to connect to them even sending them cease and desist orders and I feel extremely lucky that we had Bruce who's been so open these people uh, have taken it really hard have, have taken a big hit uh, finding out that uh, they aren't who the person uh, the person they thought they were. So help them through a little bit, that's, that's great. That's, I think, the least I can do, having brought them into this mess. <laughs> Steve said his parents yep. were going to take it to the grave. Yep, yep. Like, if yep. he hadn't asked and his mom's face, I, I assume, oh. had it just crumbled and he knew. My dad and I have had some hard conversations, and, you know, once he found out that I met Bruce and met these siblings, he made a comment to me like, oh, so this is your new family now. And I was like, Dad, these are new people in my life, but they're not my new family. Like, they don't replace you guys. And he even said something to me about, oh, next time you see your dad. And that was really uncomfortable for me. And I looked at him and I was like, Dad, you're my dad. Like, I'll see Bruce, he's Bruce. He's my sperm donor, but you're my dad. And he came over to me and just gave me a hug and he said, like, thank you for that. And I think ultimately, <laughs> like, I think that's the fear, right? Is like the, the parents think that we're gonna just leave. And for me, it's been something fun and exciting and I wanna be able to share. I wanna be able to share Bruce and my siblings and talk about them with my mom and dad and not be worried about hurting their feelings. And so I'm glad that we've had the conversations now because now I can come home and tell about tell him how excited I am about this, and he gets that he's my dad, and yet I also have this part of my life and my family too. Here we can go. Can you get us all? Warrior yeah. pose. Yeah, okay. <laughs> One, two, pose, and boom. Sending that to everybody. <laughs> That's, That's nice. true. <laughs> it means that I have this kind of special, it's not really a secret anymore, but like a special connection to some who, people who used to be strangers and who are not strangers anymore. Yeah, here I am, 75 years old, uh, on probably the downhill trajectory, and then to have this door pop open with these children, these offspring of mine that uh, I'm loosely linked with. It's been exciting. It's opened a whole new uh, avenue in my life. Looking back at it now, it seems so crude. 30, 40 years ago, people taking absolute strangers, total strangers, as the uh, biological father of, of your kids. But uh, the fact that it was so crude, and yet the results have been so good, <laughs> is uh, kind of a, a happy surprise to me that all these kids turned out so well from such a uh, crazy, uh, random process. <laughs>